ladies and gentlemen, it is the basic Sorgonomics. I am at Sorgatron, Mike Sorg, Sorgatron.com, and I am now available for your podcast, bar mitzvahs, and corporate events. Uh, just coming off of, uh, well, one, uh, uh, guessing, guesting, I don't know. I, I guess my name's on the door, but uh, the midweek war. Uh, we're talking about some NXT, but before that, actually visiting another studio, not the Mayhem Studios here in Pittsburgh, PA, but my friend John Towers with Red Horse uh, Radio that you can find on Stitcher and iTunes. Uh, he does a great thing. A, a guy I've known for a little bit here, first as a comic book artist, then as a, oh, you do pro wrestling as well. So he is a pro wrestler. Of course, we had to get into a little bit that as well. But he does this, he, so he's got his comic book. He's got his own comic book. No, he's, he's he's a lot more established than that. He's got his comic books uh, that he does, and uh, and and beyond that, his illustrations does this other stuff, and he does this podcast, and it's a you know talking with a lot of creatives and talking about process and and how they're using social media around like you know putting your stuff out there as creatives. And it was really really fun. I, we must have gone two hours. It felt like it. I don't know. And I also felt like every question he asked ended up turning into another story that didn't answer the initial question. So I have a challenge for you. If you get, if you, which is you get to the end of the podcast, and then I have a deal I make with you, presuming he didn't edit it out, which I don't think he is. He seems to believe in the raw aspect of podcasting and no editing. Uh, like I do, from what I can tell. Uh, so, and even I use, uh, you know, make sure I always, you know. Every time I'm on a show, I want to at least listen to some of an episode so I kind of get what the vibe is of the show. And uh, even I was listening to a, a director, a film director uh, that, that you know was talking about process and, and all that kind of stuff, which interests me because I, I I have some documentaries I've done and I want to do one that's like a more consumable by people outside of the wrestling industry kind of thing. And it was really cool to kind of see that and, and, and work with that. And it's also cool to be in somebody else's space and see how they do the podcast and, and, and see how they do uh, with that. And I think that's really important. And, and, and I love, you know, again, I was, I was sitting down and I was watching a lot of PodCon today while I was trying to get a lot of my work done. And, uh, and, you know, some of those discussions of like, you gotta be part of the community, figure out, reach out to other podcasters and, you know, just a, like, just a, a trading notes kind of thing and, and be on each other's podcasts and see how they do things. Um, and, and yeah, there's a lot of options that you can do things remote, but he's a guy I love. I don't even want to call this an old school mentality, but it, to, I mean, to me it is because I've been doing this for so long, I guess, but, but it, uh, basics mentality right he's not doing live like i was trying to talk him into doing some periscope while he's recording uh you know he's not he's he's recording this stuff right there just audio and maybe i overstretch maybe i do too much that i do the video versions and, and a lot of times the video versions don't have nearly as many hits but sometimes they do depending on the platform uh, as much as you know the audio i know the audio is the bread and butter of this stuff i i know especially those longer shows that i do because i like my longer shows i like drawn out conversations right and and you know i love and even his show is this long conversation this open conversation we get to have right and we best about everything we diverged on everything we we talked about my my juggalo days we talked about how even that turned into stuff and, and i think parts of my creative background that a lot of the people that i interact with now don't know and how long i've been doing stuff like this and kind of recognizing that and uh at one point it's like it's a little bit of therapy you know and and, and how i'm approaching things and and for right or wrong or, or or the problems i've been having um there's some uh at some points there's some heavy stuff in there so i i, ho I hope you check it out um and and it's it's it was a lot of fun and and there's a lot in there and we could have gone another several hours and i'm sure we still went too long because i think it, i i still think we went it, it's it I was there for three hours, and I don't remember much time where it didn't, when I wasn't in front of a microphone. So, <laughs> but again, and also going there, like he's seen the studio, and you know we've had a uh, uh, Frank Frank Mergy from uh, uh, Pittsburgh Podcast Network here, and he halt the Halt and Catch Fire studio, which I say, well, maybe more Catch Fire the way things are set up around here. You don't want to know our electrical situation, uh, and. Uh, and, and, and this is the way I built things out and I, you know, I build what I need and don't think about the rest. Like, 
you know, going there again, another basement stay, set up because the best place to, to podcast is the basement. I, 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 when is a podcast that I've recorded other than when I'm mobile uh, that is not a po- uh, basement based podcast? We used to be up on the top floor in one of the uh, spare bedrooms uh, here at the house. But uh, in the back room, I didn't really. I had a basement then, but anyways. But the good stuff happens in the basement. That's probably the title of this show. We'll see how that works out. But uh, but no, seriously. Uh, no, it was great to see you set up, and 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 like I said, there was an atmosphere to it. Like he sets up some beers next to you and offers you some whiskey if you'd like. And uh, you got some great sounding microphones. I actually, I should have asked him what he was using, but it sounded really great on, on, on your headphones and, and, and mixed well. And he's using a soundboard and one of those uh, little recorder. I call it a doohickey because I'm a professional, uh, you know, which I really need to look in for something like that because I know they use a lot around the work hard and Epic. Oh, uh, so they, they probably handy to look into for mobile stuff but anyways um but no I, I it was it was it was fantastic it was it was really cool to kind of be a part of that and i'd like to see more of that happen i mean i think that's another thing where uh this week uh actually uh, thursday of this week we released our interview with our friends looking for group and uh and again a lot of the interviews that we do around there are you know I grab people that I want to talk to, like genuinely who I want to talk to, um, you know, not just other podcasters, like like in the case of tonight, but just like, I, hey, I saw this thing. And even like even these guys looking for group guys, like I saw some articles, and I saw some stuff on Facebook and I didn't have a deep understanding of everything they do there. But there was enough to interest me to say you're a person I want to talk to and learn about. And I do that on the fly here in my interviews. I don't know if that's the right way to interview or anything like that. I think it's probably not. You want to do your research, etc. But it's also genuine, I feel. And even, uh, well, we had our, our friend from Bar Jusu on a couple months ago. And all I knew was he does a thing called Bar Jusu. <laughs> all right, point one. I watched one of his videos about a guy in like this entire story of a guy walking in and he gets, he gets pushed into a wall and, sh- and, and, and completely cock blocked uh, trying to pick up this, this girl. And uh, it turns into a, like a montage, like karate kid style montage of him learning bar jutsu and then how he solves that problem. And, and, and like that, that got me. I was like, okay, I'm paying attention to this stuff. And then I ran into the guy at pod camp and I was like, and, 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 and I don't forget if he mentioned or I heard somewhere else, somebody told me that he used to be a pro wrestler. So I'm like, you know, initially I'm thinking it's on awesome chat, right? It's, it's something technical. It's something interesting, something fun. And I was like, Oh, he used to be a pro wrestler. He's going on the Andy mayhem show. And, and, and again, knowing little got me in a little bit of trouble actually, uh, as I was talking with him on the wrestling mayhem show about certain somebody out in the wrestling world. Uh, but still even that entertaining, I'm willing to put myself out there like that. And, uh, you know, it's, it's that kind of reach out, you know, and, and, and in all those cases, you know, I love doing that because that is something that furthers conversations and hopefully collaboration. Uh, you know, I, I, it's how I look at any of these shows, uh, I, you know, on this part of the network right you know if we have we advertising component for these things and we all want to it'd be nice if i could just come do these and and that's how any of the anybody podcasting wants to be like can i just do a podcast and get pay me to do a podcast like they do tv shows you know or something like that you don't know how complicated that is and do you really want to become an advertisement seller right that's not what you got in this for to be a be a salesman as as much but that collaboration that turns into op- other opportunities. Podcasts create opportunities. I think that needs to be the new philosophy the more I think about it when you're when you're getting into this. Podcasts don't create income unless you do X, Y, and Z. But And maybe, maybe they do. Maybe that's the opportunity that you do. Maybe podcasts create uh, the John Lee Dumas metal model of I go pay and do this podcast score or you know, whatever it is that he sells over there, right? Or, or, or whatever the case may be. It's a vehicle for something like that. But it needs to be genuine first and not just the sales pitch, of course. And I'm sure I heard that somewhere today at PodCon, uh, but I'm adapting it. 
And uh, but no, I think I think in the long point, uh, podcasts create opportunities. Po- podcasts, if you're doing right, you're creating communities, you're creating new relationships. Don't forget, podcasting should be a social media. Unless you have a different goal. That's my philosophy. It's not the philosophy probably of cereal. And I guess they're doing pretty okay for themselves. But some stuff to consider. Maybe it helps you figure out what you're doing for the thing you're trying to create. Uh, Or maybe it doesn't. Uh, Sorgatron on the Twitters. Sorgatron.com. Please sign up for the newsletter. Uh, Let's see. This is Friday morning. So uh, in your mailbox sometime today some kind of write-up by me me putting the words on the not with one of those fancy apple pens or pencils because uh i'm not a good handwriting kind of person we'll see you guys this show is a member of the sorgatron media podcast network find out more at sorgatronmedia.com